This is the BBC on Radio 2. Er, uh, why are you talking like that, old gaffer? Shush your up face, I've got to announce the programme. Oh. <clears throat> Hallea, this is Radio 2 calling the world. Hello, world. I think he's snapped, Geoffrey. I think he has, and it is gone. It's all that moosely. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Pack in the fancy top rubbish. Who do you think you're kidding? I do apologise, ladies and gentlemen, for this interference. As I was saying, hello. This is Radio 2 calling the world. Hello, world. We're not in. <laughs> no, we're not in. We've gone to get a video out. Yeah, well, let's try somewhere else, shall we? Why not? Hello, St. Helens. You're wasting your time. We've already got a video out. Oh, I'm fed up. Hello, anybody. It's someone on the grumbleweeds. Hello? Thank you, thank you, thank you. A thousand thank yous, ladles and jelly spoons. <sighs> First of all, may I apologise for such an unprofessional opening to our humble little show. <laughs> you do your best and what happens, eh? I'd been practising that voice for weeks. Never mind, lad. You did well. Yes, but I wanted it to be really special. I even went for electrocution lessons to the... Uh, <laughs> the Vera Duckworth School for BBC announcers. <laughs> Well, never mind, old lad. Just never mind. Just cheer up. Try and have a laugh. Yeah, strip off and stand in front of a full-length mirror. <laughs> Nathan, we'll cheer him up. What with Geoffrey? We will, Ernest. We'll tell him about your latest venture. I wonder how long it would take me to knit a tennis court. <laughs> Just ignore him, Geoffrey. He's only jealous. What's this new venture you're talking about, then, Ernest? I'm thinking of opening up my own bodybuilding gymnasium. <laughs> I've heard everything now. You? Bodybuilding. <laughs> you only weigh six flipping stones went through. Hey, 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 you, hey, don't be put off by Ernest's physique. No. I mean, he's relaxed now. Yes, yes, I am. I'm relaxed now. Yes. Yes. When he flexes his muscles, though, he doubles in size. I do, what do I do? <laughs> yes. Mm. I double in size when I flex my muscles. What do I double in when I flex my muscles? Size. Size. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Give us a quick flex now, Ernest. Jeffrey. Go on, be a devil. Give him a flex. No, Jeffrey. Go on, don't be shy. Flex him, flex him. Well, all right, then. Just a quickie. <laughs> oh, look at that. Just look at that. Look at what? Just above his right elbow. <laughs> Can't you see it twitching? Slow down, Ernest. Slow down gradually. You don't want to overdo it, Ernest. No, I must know. Remember what happened the first time you went on that rowing machine? Yes. What happened? I sank. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> He did. We nearly had to get the lifeboat out to him, didn't we? Yes. Oh, Geoffrey, tell him about my neck muscles. Oh, this is fantastic, yes. this. Yes. We got this ten-ton lorry mm. and we fastened a rope on the back bumper and tied the other end round Ernest's neck. Oh, I, I have seen him do that on television. Exactly. Well, Ernest dug his heels in, the driver revs up and lets the clutch out. 200 horsepower at full throttle. And did he hold it back? No, I got dragged 200 miles. Yes. <laughs> It was the first time you'd ever seen the Isle of Man, wasn't it, Ernest? Mm. Yes, yes. Mm. I've never heard such a load of old cods walloping all me puff. <laughs> Mrs Rubbish and I used to be keen on keep fit. She used to call me her little physical jerk. <laughs> That's the best description for you I've ever heard. First thing every morning it was up, two, three, four, down, two, three, four, up, two, three, four, down, two, three, four. <clears throat> then we'd do the other eyebrow. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that, Geoffrey? <laughs> then it's hilarious, Ernest. Went to the Vera Duck with school for BBC <laughs> and now for the And to think the young cripping. Anyway, what's happening about this week's guest? Oh, no, we're not going to have to put up with another rotten guest, are we? Oh, they get right up my nose, these guests do. They come on our show and they start throwing their weight about as if they own the BBC. Oh, no. He's here. I can, I can sense it. Answer the door, someone. There's nobody at the door. <laughs> you can tell, will you? 
Right now, whatever you do, be nice to him. If he starts trying to tell me what to do, I'll... I'll flatten him. Now, you mustn't talk like that, Uncle Nasty. He might be ever so important. I'm going for a walk. Where to? Dundee. <laughs> I'll let him in, then. Look who it is. It's the one and only star of stars. The foreteller of fortunes, the mighty astrological atom himself. What's your name again? Russell Grant, you duck egg. It's Russell Grant, you duck egg. <laughs> Mr Grant. What a great pleasure it is to meet such a world-famous, gifted and modest megastar. All right, dear. There's no need to go over the top. <laughs> I'm only saying what you told me to say. <laughs> Oi, you, pal. You're not that prize Wally I used to have to watch first thing in the morning on breakfast television, are you? Now, do I look like Jimmy Greaves? <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to excuse Uncle Nasty Bustle. Russell. When someone going to introduce us? Yes, cos me and Ernest never miss you until it away, Ernest. Never, 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 never. I mean, you're an inspiration to me and Jeffrey. Absolutely. Mm, 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 mm. Yes. I won't get out of bed till I've heard you give me my horoscope. Well, I'm very flattered. Come near me, pal, you'll be flattened. <laughs> uh, 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 the, this uh, is uh, Uncle Nasty, Russell. Lovely. And which sign were you born under? Taurus the Bull. What a pity he didn't sit down just afterwards. <laughs> Did you hear that, Jeff? Oh, yes, I did. was funny, <laughs> Do I look like Jimmy Greaves? Yes. <laughs> How does this Zodiac thing work, Russell? The Zodiac is an imaginary belt in the heavens that encompasses the apparent paths of all the principal planets except Pluto, has the ecliptic as its central line, and is divided into 12 constellations or signs, each taken for astrological purposes to extend 30 degrees of longitude. Well, I could have told you that. Then why didn't you? I'm going away in December. You know, Russell, my Uncle Herbert could read cups. Oh, here we go again with his rotten Uncle Herbert. He once read mine. Ah, what did he see in your cups, old lad? That I were going to marry Elizabeth Taylor. What's clever about that? We all will in time. <laughs> Do you ever wonder what the future holds for you, Russell? I know that very soon I'm going to fulfil a lifelong ambition. I'll get you caught. <laughs> I mean, here. Well, that's why I came on your show. You know, it's always been my ambition to branch out. The front door's over there. <laughs> Look, I've just about had enough of you, pal. How's about stepping outside? <laughs> Me go outside with you. <laughs> I'll pulverise you. We'll see. After you. A pleasure. Oh, dear. This is awful. We've never had fisticuffs on one of our shows before. Oh, no. Oh, poor Russell. Oh, dear. Uh, um, what a terrible thing to happen to one of our guests. What have you done to him, Uncle Nut? Oh. Sorry about that little interruption. Now, where were we? Russell, but what's happened to Uncle Nasty? He's up to his neck in the fish pond. <laughs> Mind you, it's his own fault. He should have read his horoscope this morning. Horoscope? Why, what did it say? A good day for mixing with Pisces. <laughs> Excuse me, pal. Oh, yes, sir, can I help you? I sincerely hope so. Uh, firstly, I must ascertain that this is the office of the Marriage Guidance Council. It certainly is, yes, I am. And that I am speaking to the said Marriage Guidance Councillor for this district himself. In the flesh. Super. <laughs> what sort of problem do you have, sir? I find myself in an indescribable situation which uh, needs sorting out as soon as possible. Ah, well, that's what I'm here for, sir. And uh, so, <laughs> with your permission, I shall divulge the details of this unusual uh, situation. 
the thing is, I have a <laughs> seven wives. Oh, my goodness me. Did you say seven wives? I <laughs> certainly did. Uh, seven. <laughs> Cynthia, Samantha, Sicily, uh, Stephanie, Stella, uh, Sally, and uh, Sibyl. <laughs> oh, heavens. All residing in my semi detached house at number 66, uh, Sycamore Street, just opposite the <laughs> cemetery. I see. And um, what is the most pressing problem? I'm exhausted. <laughs> yes, well, I'm not surprised. You do realise that having seven wives is a very serious matter. Absolutely. That is why I want you at my house uh, to persuade uh, Cynthia and to persuade Samantha and to persuade Cicely and to persuade Stephanie and persuade Stella and persuade Sally and certainly persuade <laughs> Sybil. Persuade them? Uh, persuade them to do what, sir? Persuade every single one of these insatiable ladies to go back home to their husbands. <laughs> Again. Who is Uncle Nasty? Rambo Five. <laughs> Don't be silly. It's Russell, isn't it, Geoffrey? It is Ernest. It's Russell. Yeah. Who is it that it is? Russell. Bless him. It's him. Bless him. Russell. <laughs> Hello, Russell. Are you all right? You look a bit down. Well, if you must know, I am. It's down, Geoffrey. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> Mind you, I could tell. Yes, yes. Mm. So could I. Mm. So could I. Mm. 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 It looks limp. Limp. Mm. Limp. <laughs> That's the word, limp. It is. That is the word, isn't it? Yes. Limp. More limp and deflated, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Crying out loud, you two. Pack it in. Just say what you have to say, right? And let's just get on. Don't you go on at me for wasting time. I'm being as patient as I can, but if we don't do it soon, it'll be too late. Now, I thought we were going to do it ten minutes ago. I mean, if we'd started doing it ten minutes ago, it would have been done by now. Even if we'd started doing it five minutes ago, we'd be halfway through it. That was a party political broadcast <laughs> on behalf of the Monster Party. <laughs> um, what happened to the raving loony bit? He's still standing next to me. Uh, look, what are we supposed to be doing, old lad? You mean, you don't know? No. You mean, you haven't been told? Well, we haven't been told, have we, Geoffrey? We haven't, Ernest. Uh, and you can't guess? Well, we can't, can we, Ernest? We can't, Geoffrey, no. Well, why do you think I'm on the show? Because we couldn't get the roly polies. <laughs> <laughs> um, why are you on the show, Russell? Well, I told you when I arrived, to fulfil an ambition. Let the great British public hear my amazing singing, my unbelievable acting. You know, I'm very big in the theatre. <laughs> You'll be big in Wembley Stadium, pal. Hey, hey, hang on a minute, old lad. Are you trying to tell us that you're a, a bit of a turn? A bit of a turn? How dare you? I was asked to come here to bring a quality of performance that will lift this tawdry little show. I used to have an aunt, Tawdry. <laughs> Audrey, you pike aunt. Tawdry's something that's cheap and shabby. Oh, you've met her, have you? <laughs> now look, muscle. Russell. What's all this garbage about you being able to sing and, and, and act? Aye, because we knew nothing about that, did we, Ratford? We didn't, oh, lad. You obviously don't know. They obviously haven't told you. I knew they wouldn't. Oh, this is going to be Wolverhampton all over again. <laughs> I blame myself. I should have known better than to work with two Geminis, a Taurus and a couple of Virgos. <laughs> Does he mean us, Geoffrey? I hope so, Ernest. So do I. I hope so. Do you know, I can feel myself getting all worked up. Ooh, I shall probably throw a wobbly in a minute. Well, let's face it, Polly, we've got plenty to wobble. <laughs> Look, um, Russell, this is the first we've heard of you doing any singing and acting. But I had it put in my contract. Contract? What contract? Contract! Nobody's ever had a contract on this show. Well, they certainly haven't, no. They haven't all that. It's usually a quick phone call, the bus fare and a fiver in the back pocket. <laughs> Well, not with me, it isn't. I'm not some hobbledy-hoy actor you can treat like dirt. 
I've got a contract which clearly states that I can star in a production of my own choice. Well, we've no objection to that, have we, Geoffrey? I haven't turned this time. I mean, I can't wait. Oh. The only trouble is I just can't decide what to do. Well, um, what's your favourite, Russell? Well, well, I've always wanted to play the lead in, uh... Yes? No, you'll laugh. <laughs> We won't, will we? <laughs> of course we won't, no! Well, we certainly won't, will we, Ernest? No, we won't, Geoffrey, no. What about you, Uncle Nasty? Fuss. <laughs> Come on, Russell, tell us. We promise we won't laugh. Well, I've always wanted to play the lead in... Annie, get your gun. It's hilarious. <laughs> You've got plenty to wobble, eh? Yeah. <laughs> right then, that's settled. Let's do it. Hang on a minute. You've got to give me a chance to put on my costume. Well, what's wrong with the frock you're wearing, like? <laughs> this isn't a frock, it's a loose fitting caftan. Loose fitting? You can say that again. You get a you get a tube of boy scouts, is that? <laughs> anyway, why do you need a costume? This is a flipping radio, pal. Yes, I know. But if I don't wear the costume, I won't be able to perform properly. Oh. <laughs> we know somebody like that, don't we, Ernie? <laughs> we certainly do, Jeffrey. Right then, Russell. We'll see you in five minutes. Ooh, now you've done it. Get out of that one. What do you mean, get out of that one? That's that old fool over there. Um. Well, yeah, it's going to be a bit embarrassing when Russell comes back all dressed up for Annie, get your gun. Well, why old gaffer? We're doing Hamlet. <laughs> oh. Is that like a different musical? <laughs> Hamlet, you wally. Shakespeare. Oh, we've been there, haven't we, Geoffrey? We have, Ernest. The home of Shakespeare in acting. Stratford Uneven. Yes. <laughs> Stratford Uneven. We've been there as well. We have, we have, we have. We've actually spoke to him. Spoke to who? One of our greatest Shakespeare actors, Dame John Gielgud. Sir. Oh, yes, Sir Dame John Gielgud. <laughs> He's like trying to teach a concrete gnome the backstroke. And uh, did you uh, see any of Shakespeare's plays? <laughs> Henry the Tenth. You mean Henry the Fifth? We saw it twice. <laughs> We sat in a box, didn't we, Ernest? We did, Geoffrey. The best seat in the house. Oh, yes. Till somebody nailed a lid on it. Yeah! <laughs> did you, uh, did you work on see uh, Shakespeare's house? We certainly did. We saw the actual word processor that Shakespeare wrote his plays on. Yes! <laughs> Don't it make you want to weep? Right. How do I look? <laughs> oh, goodness me. <laughs> Ten gallon hat. Five gallon head. <laughs> a pair of six shooters. Denims covered in metal studs. Fancy shirt. And a pair of leather boots. Are you going to bed? <laughs> I'm supposed to be Howard Keel. That's the reason I've come on the show. Oh, I've always wanted to sing the song he made famous. There's no business like show business like no business I know. Everything about it is appealing. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Uh, who's going to tell him? Well, I'm not. <laughs> no, me neither. Well, don't look at us. I never do. <laughs> right, let's toss for it. Call. Heads. Heads it is. Right. We're doing Hamlet. We're doing Hamlet. Hamlet? We're doing Hamlet. Oh, you had heard then. Yeah. <laughs> I shall need a cod piece. <laughs> Get me a bag of chips, I'm starving. <laughs> but what about my big number? There's no business like show business like no business I know. Everything about it is... We're doing flipping Hamlet. I've had a brainwave. Let's do Hamlet Get Your Gun. <laughs> I'm sorry, Russell, but you see, we have our reputations to think of. We've done loads of Shakespeare's plays. As fast as he writes them, we do them. 
Yes, the Merry Wives of Winslow. Windsor. You've obviously never been to Winslow. <laughs> you know, there's this big red headed girl on the checkout at Quick Save. Do you know, I am not kidding. Every time Will you in. knock it off? She says that to me every time I go in. <laughs> <laughs> but what about my show stopping number? There's no business like show business. Forget it, Paul. I think you'll find that Shakespeare wrote something just as show stopping in Hamlet, Russell. I've been conned. Well, if they think they can get away with this, they've got another thing coming. Right then, let's get on with it. Placey places, everybody. The play what you're about to hear has been classified PG. Pickle gherkins. <laughs> what are you on about, pickle gherkins? There's a repeat later on in the week. Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we proudly present William Shakespeare's Hamlet. <laughs> oh, whoa, 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 whoa. What are you playing at? Put the proper record on you, Wally. Sorry. <laughs> right. Lights. Action. Fill the hot water bottle. And cue music. <laughs> Prince of Denmark. Hail the Prince of Denmark. Oi, are you there, old lad? It would appear, sire, <laughs> that the noble prince is not about it. <laughs> well, where is he? You might flip in Noah's. He's reading his rotten horoscope. <laughs> your feelings are numb, your emotions are churning inside you. You could be making a big mistake, and your best plan is to do a runner. <laughs> uh, you cannot leave us, sire. Thou art artist, the Prince of Denmark. How if am I to know it that I am the Prince of Denmark? Because thou hasteth Danish written all down one side. <laughs> Playeth the royal musiceth for the entrance of our noble princess. There's no business like no business like no business I know. Look, pal, the Prince of Flippin' Denmark does not sing that song, right? Just read the script, right? Come on, action! Sire, what news of Carlisle? The last I heard, they were winning 2-0. <laughs> hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Now, come on, Russell, make an effort. I'm sorry. Carry on. Ah! Here is cometh the noble Prince of Denmark. Hello, darlings. <laughs> Hello, darlings. The Prince of Denmark wouldn't say, hello, flipping darlings. Do you know, I think we can forget the BAFTA award here, Jeff. <laughs> so do I, Ernest. We'll never get to our bit at this rate. Well, it's all very well for you to criticise. Oh, I'm in agony with this cut piece. <laughs> but, uh, um, if you don't mind me asking, what uh, exactly is, um, Wrong with your cod base, Russell. Oh, I think it's been fried in batter. <laughs> Look, let's try again, eh? Look, from the beginning of the next scene. Action! Tis a far, far better thing that I do now than I have ever done. And pray, what is that, sweet prince? There's no business like show business, like no business I know. Oh, no, no. Everything about it oh, is a feeling. Oh. I think I'll go get a video out. You know, Russell, you're making it very difficult. But I'm desperate to sing that song. You've got a song later, right? Action. Prithee! What? Prithee! Well, I think it's through that door, second on the left. <laughs> Read what's on the script. Alas, poor Yorick, I knew him, Horatio. A fellow of infinite jest of most excellent fancy. Beautiful. But soft. Is this not the very witching hour of night? Brilliant. 
Only we could do it. When churchyards yawn and black bats wing, and hell itself sings out, there's no business like no business like no. Business like no. Back it in, back it in, back it in, back it out loud. I'll swing for him, I will, I'll swing for him. Me thinkest it is time I lefteth this placeth. Oh, thouest goeth nowhere, not until I have setteth thee upeth a tankard of my finest ale. That is mosteth kind of the Amos. <laughs> I'll have a pinter. I saweth Dolly in the village this afternoon. He's at it now. What are we doing in Emmerdale Farm? Um, I'm sorry, I just, I'm sorry, I just got carried away. It's my favourite programme, you see. Well, you've got one more chance. Mess this up and I'll swap your lugs round. Right, everybody, now, come on. Try really hard. Action! To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing them, end them. Do you know, I've never been so deeply moved in all my life. End them, lad, I end them in the time-honoured traditional way of ending these things by singing a song. <laughs> There's no business like <laughs> Hang on. That's not my song. It is, Russell. It's the one Shakespeare wrote specially for us. I'm watching you, Grant. Won't pay for that rotten song, and you'll be picking your teeth up with a broken arm. <laughs> oh, well, if you put it like that. Come on, off you go, Russell. Me and Jeffrey will do all the hey, nonny, nonnies. We will. We're good at hey, nonny, nonnies, me and Ernest. Yeah, yeah. yes, yes. Right. If music be the food of love With a hey and a ho and a hey Nonny no With a hey Nonny no honey no Stop this you know where you can shove Will Shakespeare, Will Shakespeare, Will Shakespeare Will you jump in the lake dear Now everyone let's have a bit of fun Let's have a bit of fun Let's have a bit of fun With Annie get your gun For crying out loud Will you shut up about Annie get your flipping gun You're a Philistine No I'm not, I'm an Aquarian <laughs> We give you a song by Shakespeare. Authentic music. Best lyrics ever written. And he won't stick to the script. You want authentic music and the best lyrics ever written? Yes. You've got it. There's no business like show business. Oh, with, with a hey and a ho and a hang on a mo. That is not what it says down here. There's no people like show people. There's no biz like show biz. There's no biz. There's no business like show biz. Jeffrey. Yes, Ernest. You know what they say, don't you? If you can't beat them, join them. There's no business like show business. There's no business I know. Everything's about to been listening to Someone in the Grumbleweeds, Graham Morris and Robin with the Grumbleweeds, and me, radiant, sylph-like, petite, diminutive, pathetic, pathetic Russell Grant was someone. The script was written by Eddie Braben and Mike Craig with lyrics by Jeremy Brown. The whole show, which I personally think was ruined by the others who were in it, was produced in Manchester by a tall, dark, handsome stranger. No, it wasn't. It was produced by Mike Craig. LAUGHTER